So for this video, me and my fiance, I'm not gonna get tired of saying that, <laughs> Stacy are going to be talking about our June TBR, what we're planning on reading and hopefully getting to in the month of June. And mine might be a total pipe dream because my sister awesomely gifted me Tears of the Kingdom for my birthday. And so I'm gonna be playing a whole lot of Zelda in June. Yeah, and you planned on reading a lot when you were here because you knew like June was going to be like Zelda, Zelda, Zelda. Yeah, and that just didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I read like five books this month instead of like the ten that I wanted to. Yeah, I, but, didn't, I didn't read a lot either, so yeah. our May wrap-up is going to be puny. But to be fair, also I planned on reading things in the first like nine days of May before I came. And that didn't happen either because I was kind of burnt out from the April readathon a little bit. I needed a couple days. And then after that, we decided spur of the moment, oh, hey, we're doing a July round too. So then I had to do all the prep work for that readathon so that I didn't have to bring my laptop. So it just ended up with me not really reading. You'll catch up eventually. I will. It might be August by the time I catch up. And luckily, uh, I don't think, well, not luckily, but. I think the next visit is going to be late August for me. Yeah. So you should have all of August to read. Yeah. And I don't have a ton planned on my existing August TBR, which is good because now I'm going to have a goal to read things on my physical shelf that I have a chance of like unhauling or passing on so that I can have less books to move when we eventually decide to get married. Yes. Yeah. So uh, a long-winded intro here, but... Uh, let's talk about what we're going to read in June. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing I really want to get to in June, which was actually supposed to happen in May, but just didn't, is The Hero of Ages, the last book in Mistborn Era 1 by Brandon Sanderson. And I've been reading, well, I had been reading one of these a month. So years ago, I'd read Final Empire, loved it, and then just didn't have time to continue the series. And so this year, I finally picked it back up continued on with Wall of Ascension, and I'd really like to get to this one while things are still fresh in my mind. Unpopular opinion, the worst Cosmere novel. I don't think I'm going to agree with you, but we'll see. I I just don't see it like being worse than Elantris for me. Elantris was so good. Five stars, baby. Mm, I gave it like a three <laughs> and a half, I think. I I remember... Okay, this is a tangent, but I remember feeling like Hrothin's POV was so, like, wasted in Elantris. I wanted so much more from him. And then Serene's POV was just kind of like, it started good, and then it got really long. And Raven's POV was good, but then the ending was kind of cheesy. So, I don't know. I wanted I, more from Elantris. I really need to reread that book, because it was awesome. But Hero of Ages is probably a book I will... Well, I, I, I hesitate to say never but I, I really don't want to reread it. Okay. Yikes. Well, I'm going to have a better time with it than he did. Probably. Yeah. And so the first book that I'll mention off the back is Just After Sunset, which is our continuation of the Stephen King short story book club. We recently just wrapped up everything's eventual and starting in June on June 19th, which is a fun reference for all you Stephen King Dark Tower fans, we'll be starting Just After Sunset so if you're interested in joining the Stephen King Short Story Book Club, come join us. We'll be doing one short story uh, slash novella a week. Also, it's off the bat, not off the back. <laughs> Just saying. So the next one I want to get to in June that was also supposed to happen in May but didn't is Kingdoms of Death. And that's the fourth Sun Eater book by Christopher Rocchio. And I am excited to continue the series because for me, it's just gotten better and better as I go. So I'm curious to see what book four has in store. I've already read it. Yes. And I liked it slightly less than book three. Mm. And so did Justin. Okay. We both gave it four stars though, so it's good. It's not like a sudden drop off in quality. It's just book three was like peak Sun Eater for us. Yeah. Well, also book four and five was originally intended as one book, right? So book four is probably going to be a little bit slower. It's going to be like more like the build up for it, book five, I think. It was definitely slower. Yeah. So you're probably not going to have as good time as you did in book three. Yeah, that's fair. But book five should be great. And speaking of book five, Ashes of Man, I will for sure be getting to that in June, continuing the Sun Eater uh, 
uh, buddy read that we're doing with Justin. Yes, and I'll get it in there as well. I did two and three back to back, so I'll just do four and five back to back as well. And they're both shorter. They're both like 22 hour audios, so. Yeah, and I also find that with Sun Eater in particular, like every book kind of drops you into a new situation. And so it takes you a while to kind of get reoriented, reoriented. But it helps for me if I get to them fairly soon because I don't have quite as much of a feeling as needing to be reoriented. Like it just, I don't know. There's something about getting to them sooner that's helpful for me. Yeah, book four definitely drops you into a bit of a time jump and you're just like, wait a minute. What is happening? What is happening? Yeah. The next book that me and Stacy and I know a few of y'all are also going to be buddy reading with us is The Dry by Jane Harper, which this is our... I don't know what book in uh, Throw, Chill, or Kill book club. Well, That's we our... started in February and it's July, so that makes it the sixth one, right? No, June. Oh, yeah, it's June. <laughs> Why am I thinking <laughs> July? I'm thinking July because we just filmed our readathon announcement, which is July. Yeah, so this is our fifth Thrill, Chill, or Kill book club. I think the last one we did was My Lovely Wife, which yeah. a lot of us were kind of chill about that book. Like, it wasn't terrible, but it was decent. Or maybe it's just wishful thinking that I think it's July because I'm really excited for the July book. Since it's Riley Sager's new release. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're jumping away. Ahead, <laughs> yeah. We're reading The Dry yeah, by I Jane am, Harper. I am looking forward to reading that, too. I know it's a favorite of my sister's, and I've had her copy since, like, she only had one book out. So I've been slacking on it, and I need to get around to it. We're both definitely excited for it. Yeah. And the next book I need to get to, well, actually, that's going to be two books because I've also been slacking on this read along, is going to be Iron Gold and Dark Age by Pierce Brown because I'm doing the Red Rising read along leading up to Lightbringer. So Iron Gold was supposed to happen in May. It didn't. So it's going to June. The next book I'll mention is the winner for the Patreon Wheel Spin. And the book that was chosen for me was Empire of the Vampire or uh, of the Vampire. Yeah, right? Empire of the Vampire. By Jay Kristoff. Now, I've heard n not so great things about uh, Never Nights, and I've never really wanted to read that, but I think you told me that people who generally don't like Never Night end up really liking Empire of the Vampire. And vice versa. It's like people who are Jay Kristoff fans almost never enjoy both. Okay. Well, either way, I'm excited to give it a shot, and I will be doing so in June. So the next book that I want to get to in June is Bone Shard War. And this came out at the end of April, but I haven't gotten there yet. And I'd really like to finish off this series. So book one for me was really strong. Book two is kind of meh, but I've heard book three kind of takes it back up. So I'm hoping I have the same experience and enjoy it. And if nothing else, I'll be finishing out another series, which always feels good. Yeah, I'm excited for you to get to it. I finished it in April. I still love book one. That's like a five-star book for me. Book two, like you said, kind of dips in quality a little bit. Book three, uh, it has similar issues of book two for like one thing. But overall, it's not that big of a deal. But overall, <laughs> great book, great ending, a lot of action. Uh, yeah, I really liked it. I think I gave it four and a half stars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I hate that book. Come here, Button. You can be in the video. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hi. We have a cat. Yes, we do. And the book that was chosen for me by my Guess the Beat winner for May, which I'm going to be reading in June, is A History of Wild Places by... Uh, Shay Earnshaw. Shay Earnshaw. Now, I've heard interesting things about this book. I know it's very popular... I think it's supposed to be like a mystery thriller kind of book, but I think it's supposed to be maybe a little bit more on the literary side, maybe like a hint of magical realism, which I know you don't like at all. Yeah, no thanks. But basically the plan is for me to read this and then I'll let you know if I think you'll like it or not. And this was chosen for you by Jane. Jane. She yeah. won Guess the Beat, which was funny because a lot of people had, I think like 12 beats guessed, so they had like 12 votes on... The wheel, I think Jane only had three, so it's kind of funny that she won, but yeah. Hey, the wheel was in her favor. Yep, so I'm definitely excited for this. So the next book on my June TBR is Gold by Raven Kennedy, and that's the fourth book in the Plated Prisoner series. And this is a series I've been buddy reading with Sharon. We originally intended to do one like every other month because the fifth one comes out in December, 
and like everyone ends on a cliffhanger so that didn't happen we kind of binged them all in like two months so yeah yeah i know y'all are very excited for that yeah we're really looking forward to the release of book five and she's already finished book four but i haven't started yet so i need to get on it and get my act together yeah i am excited to read it though so over on our discord the book of Stormer discord i did a few polls because i had some extra room to play with for my june tbr and basically i set up a poll for people to vote on uh which series uh they wanted me to start so either like fantasy or sci-fi and then uh standalones like which standalones people wanted me to read so i picked uh, a winner from each of those and and also a runner-up so i have four books to mention here the winner for the series was actually the dragon's path by daniel abraham now this is a book i've had for a while I'm pretty excited for it. I hear it's kind of slow paced, but it's supposed to be pretty good character work and world building. I know a lot of people really love it and it's one of their favorite series of all time. Is this one Dagger and Coin? Yep, it's okay. the first book in the Dagger and Coin series. That's what I thought. I probably should have mentioned that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited to get to that one. Do you have any interest? Yeah, uh, especially depending on how you feel about it. Though I think my first foray into Daniel Abraham will be uh, the James S.A. Corey stuff because I have Leviathan Wake sitting at home waiting for me. Yeah. Yeah. And then the runner up for that one, I think there may have been one or two, but I'm going to go with this one, is Priest of Bones by Peter McLean. And this is the first book in the War for the Rose Throne series. And I know this is going to make uh, our friend Jordan from The Boiled Jellyfish very happy. One of his all-time favorite series. I know it's supposed to be kind of like maybe like a mob book or like something to do with the mafia in like a fantasy setting. Uh, which I read kind of, uh, what was it, Jade City? Yeah, Greenbone Saga. Greenbone Saga. And that was good. I'm hoping this one is a little bit better. Uh, but I'm really jumping into it not really knowing that much about it. People have said good things though. Oh yeah, people are people love this series, so definitely excited to check that out. And then, like I said, I also did a poll for people to vote on standalones they want me to read. And the winner for that one, I think by far, was The Doors of Eden by Adrian McKinty. And this is... McKinty? Oh God, <laughs> that would be a very different book. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, wrong Adrian. This is by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And I've read several of his books so far, and they've all been very good. I'm definitely interested to try one of his standalones. And this is, I think, supposed to be like a hard sci-fi about probably parallel universes, if I would guess. Uh, I'm always interested to try more Tchaikovsky, so that'll be a lot of fun. I'll probably read it when you're done, too, because I've read a couple of Tchaikovsky novellas and had a good time with them. So. Yeah. And then uh, a runner-up that I'm very excited to read is Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. Of course, I loved Razorblade Tears, and that's one of my all-time favorite kind of thrillery books. And yeah, I'm interested to try all of S.A. Cosby's books, and we're also going to be reading My Darkest Prayer in December. Yeah, for the Thrill, Chill, or Kill Club. Yep, so yeah. those were the winners for my uh, random polls that I did over on Discord. So the next book on my June TBR is The Last Argument of Kings, the third book in the First Law Universe by Joe Abercrombie. And I have been doing the first law along, hosted by Becca in the books. So I am excited to keep going with that. And it's weird because the first time I tried the series, I ended up DNFing book one about halfway through, like at the end of part one, and I was kind of bored. But coming into it a few years later as a more seasoned fantasy reader, I've enjoyed it more. It's also been kind of a unique experience because everyone kind of touts Abercrombie as grimdark. But it's very different feeling than more modern Grimdark, so. Boo. <laughs> That's no. my take. No, I've been enjoying the series, so. I'm excited to keep going with it. And the last book on my June TBR is The Darkness That Comes Before, which is the first Prince of Nothing book by R. Scott Baker. And I know a certain someone's going to be very excited about this, Narsal. Narsal. Yeah. He's been bugging me to read these books for I don't even know how long. I'm not super confident that you're going to love it. Uh, I gave it three stars. Like, I liked some aspect, aspects of it, some aspects I didn't. So I'm definitely interested to, to get your opinion on it and to see if you're willing to continue. I'm at least willing to continue with the series, but I don't know if you will. I think 
I'm going to like it more than you. And I just think the reason being like with other Grimdark we've both read, I tend to enjoy it more. I think this one just has a really, I don't know if you're going to love the writing style. Okay. I think you're going to get into it and you're going to be like, ugh, why is it written this way? I mean, maybe. But as long as the story and characters are intriguing, I'll be fine. So I think our plan is to read book one in June, take July off because of the readathon, and then read book two in August and book three in September. Well, I guess that means I'll be reading book two in August. And book three in September. Okay. <laughs> so I've got two more books to mention. I'm not sure if I'll get to this next one, but the one after that, my last one, Stacy will be mad if I don't get to it. So the next book I have is A Labyrinth of Scions and Sorcery by Curtis Craddock. I'll post a picture here. It's the sequel to An Alchemy of Mask the Mirrors, which I really liked. I think I read that a couple months ago, maybe, oh yeah, in April. And I really enjoyed book one, and I'm definitely looking forward to getting to the sequel and eventually uh, the last book in the trilogy, which I'll probably read. Uh, may maybe not in July for the readathon, maybe in August. Yeah, I guess we'll see how many short options you pick out for your July readathon prompts and how much time you have. And it's the last book that I'll mention. <laughs> Stacy's gonna love that I'm finally reading this. It's Outlander <laughs> by Diana Gabaldon. Gabaldon. And uh, the reason I'm interested in reading this is because Stacy got me into the show. Yeah. And I wasn't super confident that I was actually gonna like it, but we're like ha more than halfway through season one and I'm pretty much enjoying it. Yeah, and, and I know it's one of your favorite series. Yeah, definitely. And also, I will say the show focuses more on the romance aspects than the book. So if you're fine with the show, you're going to enjoy the book. Yeah, it's a chunky book. Yeah. And the other funny thing about this is that this has been her Patreon pick for like months and months and months. Over and a year. And it's never won. And so she finally just took it off uh, her her thing and then she put on another book. So yeah. I'm actually going to read it now that she did that. Yeah, because before you were like, oh, I can't read it because I need to wait for it to win the Patreon. But I'm like, fine, I'll pick something else. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely thinking that I'm going to like it. And I will hopefully continue on with the series. Yeah, I will say it's very long, but it's not very dense. Like it reads very quickly. And also the audiobook narrator sounds a lot like the actress who plays Claire in the show. So okay. it's a good combo experience. Like you won't be, I think, overly jarred going to the audiobooks having a different voice for Claire in your head because they sound very similar. Okay. And then if by some miracle I have extra time, I plan to get to Black Veil, which is the fourth Green Rider book by Chris and Britton. But I'm going to be honest, it's probably not going to happen because Zelda. I know you've been wanting to read that book for a while, but yeah. it's just, it just has not happened yet. It has not happened. I've had too busy of a TBR for months, too many like buddy reads and read-alongs that I've committed to, but those are kind of starting to peter out now. I think June will be too hectic just because I fell behind in May and we'll have some catch up. I can do it though. I mean like that's 10 to 11 books. I realistically read 10 books a month in an average month anyways. But you're also gonna play Zelda. Yeah, it will really depend on how much I can kind of combine audiobook time with something in Zelda. Like if there's a lot of just like going around to gather things like materials or whatever, I can do that with an audiobook, especially if it's not something very dense or very detailed or like a sequel to a series. I'm already like very familiar with the world and the characters and everything. So we'll see how that all goes out or we'll see how that all goes down. <laughs> how it all goes out no how out the window <laughs> yeah that's what your, your tbr is gonna go out the window it might it might <laughs> um if if it does i'll catch up in august for sure because i don't have that many planned books for august let me let me just look yeah so i only have three books that i've committed to in august so if i if things get pushed behind that's where they're gonna fall all right, so those are all of the books that we're going to hopefully get to in the month of June. What are you guys the most excited for us to read? And also, what are you guys excited to read in the month of June? Oh, you sometimes add stuff at the end of that. I had nothing to add to that one. Okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do now. Do you guys have more faith in me than I do? Do you think I'll manage to get my June TBR done? Or do you think it'll all go out the window because of Zelda? I think if you 
plan a balanced day of Zelda and reading, you can do it. Maybe. Maybe not for like the when you first get home, because like the first week or so, you're, it's gonna be Zelda, Zelda, Zelda. Poss no, it's gonna be Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a picture of Ozzy. <laughs> yes, he's gonna be bugging the crap out of me for attention, for walks. You know, he's been missing me and moping around home. So the first week he's going to bug me to play with him and like give him attention. And then after that, it's going to be Zelda. Yeah. So hopefully I can pair Ozzy with some audiobooks. Yeah. And then really get into Zelda. And then once I have a feel for Zelda, then hopefully I can combine reading and Zelda a little bit. All right. So like I said, that is our June TBR. And let us know if you enjoyed this video. Uh, you can give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also go sub to the Bookish Drummer Discord, or actually sub to this channel, and then go sign up for the Bookish Drummer Discord. And I also have my Patreon and my Amazon wish list. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a fantastic day. And don't forget to sign up for the July Readathon if you want. Yeah. We'll have a good time for sure. Actually, this is going up before that. Okay. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> There's a July Readathon. You'll see the announcement video on June 2nd. Yeah. In yeah. Couple, in a couple days here. Bye. Bye.